Well, we're back at it with some more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer tournament action as the mammoths of Spaniard and Norska face down Scribble and the Skaven. We don't have one mammoth, we got two, with Soul Crusher teaming up with the World Wanderer to pancake some vermin on Schwarzhofen. We're into the quarterfinals of the Salad Cup, a 38-man tournament with some really good players run by the ever-chosen Aerocrastic himself. And this game's got two mammoths, a Hell Pit Abomination, a Screaming Bell, and a Doom Wheel, so basically everything a Warhammer fan could ask for. And Scribble is going full-on iconic with his build, mixing in units with every major Skaven clan, getting their most impressive stuff all on the field at once, with Plague Sensor Barrows to help carve through Berserkers and their physical resist, while Rat Ogres, that stable and reliable monstrous infantry anchor that you really can't leave home without, provide the mass and the catching power the Skaven so desperately need. So, Spaniards brought a Shaman Sorcerer of the Lore of Metal, and thankfully we're not going to be seeing Final Transmutation here. Instead, Plague of Rust and Glittering Robe, which is an insanely good buff for Mammoths when they're in the thick of the fighting. You can get them plus 60 armor in an AoE, almost double their armor value, and that can really help them sustain when they're surrounded or getting whittled down by pesky Ratmen skirmishers. A lot of Norskin Warhounds and Zerkers on the front line. On the other side, Scribble's got Clan Ashen in the vanguard with some Night Runners channeling their inner Nippon with some Shurikens and Ninja cosplays, and a Doom Wheels here from Clan Scryer. Sensor Bears and their magical attacks will shred through Norskin physical resist, so a decent choice for sure, although they're still going to get beat up by Zerkers, they'll dish out a lot of damage as well. And Rat Ogres in the back, and a Screaming Bell for Unholy Clamor, Warp Lightning, Scorch, and Howling Warp Gale. Against Norsko, which is pretty interesting, might have been expecting Frost Worms or Feral Manticores to be taken to the skies, but no such luck here. No Flyers on the field for Spaniard. A lot of Clan Rats, a lot of Slave Rats, and a defense in-depth approach here as the Norskins and Skaven close in for the kill. And both players getting aggressive early. I think this is going to be a really fast one. Neither faction particularly known for their tankiness. I mean, Norska and Skaven, both pretty low armor across the board, and they both have rush armies. So lots of terror, lots of low armor monsters. I think it'll be quick and brutal one way or the other, but the Ashen Assassins, the Night Runners, getting some good shurikens into the flank of those Norskin Warhounds as they push up. And I like how Spaniard's getting very aggressive with his Warhounds here, just pushing those back, making sure they can't hit the high value stuff like the Mammoth. And here it comes into the flank of those Slave Rats and into the flank of the clans, and they're gonna go down real quick. They're gonna try to escape, but it'll be Terror Route City as it gets charged in the back. And one swipe of those tusks will send a bunch of them into the Shadow Realm. I love watching Mammoths do their work coolest monster in the game, or certainly one of them. Norskin Warhounds up the center, chasing down a lot of the Night Runners and pushing them further back as the Mammoth goes straight in, right for the Hell Pit Abomination, which is an interesting choice. I think what he's going to try to do here is just tank out a lot of damage in the center and overcast that Glittering Robe to get plus 60 armor, get both Mammoths up to 130 armor. Going to mean they're going to be really hard to cut down as the Doom Wheel and the Rat Ogres, the Plague Sensor Bears, triple team. Those Norskin Berserkers and Warp Lightning rains down from above into a big chunk of them. Doing some decent damage there, killing a few models, and more Berserkers getting committed to the fight now. But the Doom Wheel is in a really nice spot. You just run over stuff right now, and as it fires those Warp Lightning shots out from the flank, that magic damage will go straight through Norskin Physical Resist, as well as the Rat Ogres charge in and start their RKOs in the middle of the Zerker line. So, Wolfric already down to half HP, taking a lot of damage from the Hellpit Abomination, who is already paying for itself really nicely at the moment. And the Mammoths are kind of isolated out on this side. They're just kind of in the thick of the fighting right now. No cycle charging whatsoever, just tanking damage. With that Glittering Robe, going to make them a lot tankier than normal, but not sure how long they'll be able to sustain there. While well, the Plague Sensor Bears continue to fight with these Zerkers and more of them getting tossed around, and that's a really good engagement for the Skaven. Scribble's done a great job so far of in the center overloading each of those fights against the Berserkers, and with the Doom Wheel and Rat Ogres in support, Norska is gonna crumble pretty quickly right there. But out on the left flank, Spaniard's got a ton of room to maneuver with those Warhounds, and one rear charge from those would be enough to break the Raki out on that side, so we'll keep an eye out for that. This Mammoth play is straight up YOLO. I'm loving it. Wolfric is just in there, doesn't care, dropping the beat stick and the hammer on everything, but he's surrounded right now, and he doesn't have much help, and that's scary. Hunter Champion's going down on the lore of Ruin Grace here, but with the Abomination and all these bodies nearby to protect him, he'll be fine, and those Rat Ogres are preventing the cycle charging of Wolfric's Mammoth, 
and really preventing a lot of his damage output, which is a big deal. 22% damage resistance going down, but Warp Lightning and Scorch ripping in from the flank on the Norskin Infantry Formation. That's some really good casting from the Lore of Ruin Grace here, but uh, this is brutal. Rat Ogre is just routed. They'll come back. They're at half HP. Wolfric is really getting low at this point. Doom Wheel having a field day, but so is the Soul Crusher Mammoth with that 44% damage negation. From Enrage, it really hasn't taken much damage at all because the Hell Pit has been focusing Wolfric, which is a good idea, honestly, because he's about to die. He's about to go down. Norskin Warhound just got a rear charge on the right flank of the Skaven, and that means that entire flank is about ready to break. That could be a big swing in the Norskin's favor. Plague Sensor Bears in the thick of it now. And Zerker's surrounding him. And it looks like some really brutal CQC fighting breaking out all across the battlefield. It's nice to see Clan Pestilence get some representation on the battlefields of Warhammer too. But Zerkers are winning that fight handily. Sensor's passed 80 kills now. They've done a ton of damage. Made good account of themselves, but just getting ground down now. They just don't have a lot of sustain. And Soul Crusher is still going after the high value stuff. Help it Abomination has really racked up a ton of damage on the Mammoth so far. I'm very impressed by that because Wolfric just routed. He's gone now. And yes, it was definitely a YOLO play from the Mammoth, but it really did take a lot of damage to kind of protect the Zerkers and the mainline infantry for Norska. But as Wolfric routes, that means Soul Crusher is going to have to put in a lot more work here. And it looks like it might be able to do so, lining up a real nice charge into the flank. And it's going to spew Crimson everywhere as those tusks gore and rip and tear. And death stalks the land for the Skaven. I mean, that must have gotten 30 kills off the charge alone. Shuriken's arcing right past. Let's get another look at that as he charges through. Stomping him into oblivion. Wow. I mean, mammoth charges are fantastic. Help Abomination now into the flank and rear of Soul Crusher, though. And if that mammoth goes down, this is going to be over for Norska. There's no way they're going to pull this back if they lose both their mammoths. Wolfric, I'd be surprised if he comes back to the fight, honestly. He's getting chased off by a Doom Wheel right now, and... I don't think Scribble will let Wolfric rally, but he still has that Shaman Sorcerer as a leadership bastion. Spaniard's gonna be relying on Soul Crusher to carry the game now. Scribbles will be relying on that Hell Pit Abomination. It might very well come down to a Clash of Titans. The Kaiju, the King of Monsters, who can carry the day here. Warp Lightning and Scorch ripping through again. And who else is hyped for the new Godzilla, by the way? Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah all in the same movie. You think it's gonna be pretty glorious? You know what else is glorious? Warpstone Fists, grinding an Abomination's enemies into bone and blood. Throwing that thick girth around. Big ol' Abomination booty getting tossed around a bit. But this is a really important fight. Screaming Bell in there. Rat Ogres on their last legs, maybe about to break. Everything's low HP, but the Help It A-Bomb. If it can take down the Mammoth, then Skaven can win. If it can't, if the Mammoth manages to survive, I think the Skaven might not have the killing power to win the day. So, killing a Shaman Sorcerer and the Mammoth, those are the two things that Scribbles really needs to get off the field right now. But that Shaman Sorcerer needs to get the hell out of there. That is not a fun fight for him, especially because he is on a horse. Another big charge coming in from the Soul Crusher and Terror around City everywhere. And it is going to come down to a big monster mash right now. Soul Crusher has just been a monster this game just an absolute beast back here doom wheel and wolfric dueling and the hamster wheel of doom is going to impale and shish kebab the poor mammoth elephant drop into the ground wolfric plummets from the back of that howda and the doom wheel just won a duel against wolfric the wanderer you don't see that every day it was actually hilarious back here help it abomination in the middle of a berserker horde which is not really where it wants to be. It does have low armor, which means Zerkers will actually rack up quite a bit of damage, but too horrible to die, has procced, just got a lot of regen, and he's pulling out, and that's the right thing to do, Scribble, is making sure to go after that mammoth if he can, but that Soul Crusher, it's been so beastly, this game. Just everything it touches, just melting in the face of those charges, and those goring tusks, and everything back here just routed. And that means it's down to the Hell Pit and the mammoth, Yet again, but as the Abomination keeps flaunting that thickness in the middle of the battlefield, that Screaming Bell is in a really bad spot. And Soul Crusher has turned his attention to the leader of the Ratmen, bellowing forward and splintering the Skaven's hopes of winning into Matchwood. 
Hellpit Abomination has fantastic leadership, but as it charges forward to meet its fate, the Albino Elephant and rest of the severely beaten but rallied units from Norska are going to be too much. And the A-Bomb will fall as it is surrounded and it'll give birth to a bunch of vermin in the process, but too little, too late. Spaniard will take the game. Great effort from Scribbles, honestly, but very nice usage of Glittering Robe on those Mammoths to get them up to 130 armor, allow them to tank for as long as they did. And that Mammoth duo really did carve a path. Wolfric wasn't amazing in terms of damage output, but he absorbed so much of the Skaven army for so long that it really allowed those Warhounds to harass the flanks and route a lot of the infantry and help turn that fight in his favor. And Soul Crusher racking up more than 200 kills, which is glorious. A-Bomb got two full chevrons, took Soul Crusher down past half HP, and did almost all the damage to Wolfric. So don't scoff at those 23 kills. The A-Bomb did a ton of work that game, really did carry the Skaven for a lot of it. Doom Wheel didn't get quite as many kills, honestly, as I would have expected. It was in the middle of Norsk and Berserkers pretty much the entire battle. Only got 46 kills, but Again, those are kind of high value targets, so not the worst thing ever, but I would have expected to do more there. Did chase down Wolfric and kill Wolfric though, so that ain't half bad either. Now, I do want to leave you guys with a quote from Aerocrastic here, our ever chosen champion from Total War Warhammer forums. He's one of the better Skaven players in the community right now, I think, and he has a pretty good outlook on the Ratmen and how they fit into the meta overall. And I quote, to be fair, Skaven are in a fine place right now in terms of playability. I put them at the lower end of tier 2 without hesitation, but any problems with them are due to holes in their roster, not unit performance, generally speaking. Skaven players are too insistent on victimizing themselves for some reason. I'd also like to forward the idea that from a balance perspective, people who are exclusive mains of certain factions are probably the least credible to speak on this faction's balance. This is because we all have very particular playstyles, and when you're seeing very little success from the same or similar methodologies over and over again from the exact same perspective, it's kind of easy to believe something to be completely useless when in reality you were simply approaching the problem from the wrong angle. Not intending to accuse anyone of anything here, just a thought for everyone's consideration. So, end quote. I think that's a really good way of putting it. I do agree with him that Skaven are in the lower tier of factions right now, but that's a testament to how good the balance overall is in the multiplayer meta right now, because they can compete with and beat plenty of high tier factions. Obviously they have some bad matchups that are pretty tough, especially at a high level, just like most factions do, but I don't think the balance for Skaven overall is bad in and of themselves. They just need to get their Regiments of Renown, their Doom Flayers, and extra Scryer tech. Let's be honest, these DLCs to an extent, if you're looking at it from a multiplayer perspective, are a little bit pay to win. <laughs> That's a stretch. It's kind of like that though, because they really do help you compete in multiplayer. When you get more access to tools, obviously you're going to perform better. So it's not my favorite thing ever that these DLCs kind of contribute to that pay to win mentality, but I wouldn't say it's pay to win. You can definitely compete without the Regiments of Renown and the extra units, it just helps a lot. So that element is not my favorite thing ever, but I think it's worthy of discussion. And overall, I do think that when they get their extra stuff, they'll be in a much better spot and Honestly, they might even easily rack it up into like the mid high tier of the entire faction outlook. So I don't think the units they have right now are bad in and of themselves. I think they have plenty of tools to win lots of games, even in a competitive setting when you're playing against really good players. So definitely a good battle from Scribbles and Spaniard. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Indie Pride, signing out for now. Have a good one, guys.